Well, hey guys, welcome back to our podcast here at the RC Air Experience. This is podcast, I think, number five, I believe. Episode, Not that it really matters, five. but I think episode five. Episode um, five. We have some cool things planned for you. So I'm Jonathan from the lighter side of RC. We've got Anthony here from FPV, FPV Builds. And we have Chris Gleason, right? Did I pronounce yeah, that, that correct? Awesome. That's right. Just like Jackie. Perfect. Sounds yep. good. And Chris is from Cavu Customs. Did I get that yes. right? Yeah, awesome. correct. Perfect. Yeah. Welcome, Chris. Welcome thank to the you. show. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for joining us. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, I'm sure we caught you off guard with the well, I I'm pretty um, forward and outgoing, so I'm just like, <laughs> this guy looks cool. Let's get him on the show. So I, <laughs> I sent you a message, and you don't know me from a hole in the wall, so thank you for coming on. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, no, I I appreciate I appreciate the invite. I uh, I definitely was like, who is this guy, and why why is he messaging me? You know, but uh, <laughs> I figured if you weren't in my spam right away, I might you know look right. into it, give you a chance. You know, right, right, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for uh, thanks for reaching out. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So, if you haven't had the time to really watch any of the show or anything, the the, the whole premise is it, it's just like I was saying before. It's kind of just the love sharing, the love of RC aviation, right? And the reason me and John got together was, you know, I'm in the FPV and the foamy fixed wing part of it. John's into the higher end jets and, and turbine part of it and it's just a merger of those two communities kind of sharing all of our experiences talking to different people and stuff so well, okay awesome yeah cool oh, glad so to chris be here. tell us tell us who's chris who are you tell us a little bit about yourself your background sure. yeah um so i i live in connecticut now um probably relocating soon to uh to sunny florida Oh, nice. Um, once, uh, once the wife decides, uh, it's time for the beach year round, it's, uh, <laughs> pack your bags. It's time to go. So, uh, probably, uh, become a, a Southern guy, uh, here Excellent. in the next couple of, uh, couple of months, but uh, happy about that. Um, been in RC for, uh, gosh, going on 30, 30 years now, give or take. Wow. Um, and I've uh, been flying airplanes, RC airplanes, since I was 10. So yeah. wow. I'll, uh, I'll give away my age. That's 26 years ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been a great hobby. Um, I, I love the camaraderie that I've discovered here is, uh, is second to none. And uh, for me, that's, that's what makes the whole hobby worth it is, right. is all the people you meet all the things you get to, to see and experience and, and you get to share that with a lot of other um, people that have the same passion that you right. have. Right. Um, yeah. In my off time when I'm, uh, when I'm not doing RC, um, I'm actually an airline pilot. Uh, I fly for JetBlue. Cool. And um, so that's technically my full-time job. And uh, yeah. I keep, I keep this more as a, as a hobby when, uh, when I'm not doing that. So yeah. You spend a lot of time in the air between both then. I, I, I do. I do. Although I really do like being in the shop too. I like, uh, yeah. I do like yeah. the build. So yeah, that's the, that's, I, I like that part of it as well. So what was your, cause you're, you're in the, the class of stuff that John's and you're into the big turbines and the, you know, the, the really expensive big planes too. Um, what was your progression? What'd you start out with? I know you said you started out at like 10, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really have any pilots in my family, in my immediate family anyways. Um, so aviation wasn't really a thing for them. Um, but I used to go and watch airplanes, uh, when I was a kid and, um, it was really fascinated by them. And I decided very early on, uh, probably four or five years old that, you know, I was, I was going to aim to be a pilot, you know, at some point. And so, everything from then on became, how can I get to airplanes? You know, how mm -hmm. can I, and I was five. So too young to do anything with the, with the full scale stuff. So it seemed like the next option was, Hey, let's go ahead and make it, uh, you know, the RC side. And I didn't know anything about it. So it's from 
like uh, stuff you see in magazines and yeah. uh, some of the hardware stores that were in my town used to have those really cheap one channel electric single stick <laughs> ones, you know, they don't fly very well and all. Right. So um, my first one was actually um, it's by a company called Megatech. I don't even know if they're still around. Um, Never but it was, heard of it. It was an electric Cessna with rubber bands holding the wings on and a brush motor with a geared propeller. Um, wow. I mean, really kind of rudimentary stuff, but um, yeah. that's how I kind of started. And um, and I slowly started moving up through, through gas stuff and bigger electric stuff. And then um, this is coming up on year number 10 into, uh, into turbines. So, wow. um, it's been a, it's been an awesome journey and, uh, seeing the progression of the hobby since, yeah. uh, since the beginning has been, I mean, well more than I could ever have imagined where it yeah. would go and how fast it would get there. So yeah. it's, the technology uh, is crazy. The yeah. Technology it, is just it's an exciting well, time yeah. to be, uh, what was your, uh, what was your first turbine aircraft? My first turbine aircraft was actually an older BVM Balsa Bandit. Oh, cool! Um, I got a I got a really good deal on it. Um, yeah. It had the had the turbine with it already. Um, the guy I bought it from was was super helpful, help, you know, getting me set up on it and all. And uh, and he shipped it to me, which nowadays we know is a harder and harder task. So I lucked yeah. out with that. Um, so I, I actually I uh, started started buddy boxing and such on the on the balsa bandit, and um, and progressed into like uh, I had a boomerang. I wanted the original boomerang Alans, yeah. And um, I had a Fabel Velox, a smaller Velox. Um, so it was a sort of sport jet. You know, I don't think the bandit looking back on it was probably the best <laughs> first jet. <laughs> Yeah, probably but, not. <laughs> uh, but it did have a killer paint scheme and had a desert camo paint scheme that the guy had put on it. I mean, it was it was a looker for sure. So that's <laughs> yeah, I fell for it. But um, <laughs> but it was a, it was a great bird. It flew great. So yeah, yeah, I, ha I have no regrets on that. So, so cool. you're in the Northeast, like me. I mean, you have a little bit. Connecticut's got a little bit more space and some more rural areas than Long Island does. Do you have struggles flying the turbine in Connecticut? Like, is there an airfield that you guys can fly those at? Not in Connecticut. Um, I right. actually have not. I, I know there is a field. I believe it's over in Ellington, Connecticut, um, that would allow the turbine if you could if you could get it in and out of there. But um, it seems to be in a, a pretty confined space where the bigger mm. stuff has has a hard time getting in and out. Right. So. Um, I have a, I have a club over in, uh, across the river in New York. I don't, I don't live too far from, from the Hudson. So, um, it's about an hour drive for me, um, in Haverstraw, New York. And, um, okay. yeah. great, gr great group of guys. Um, and it's a really, really nice field. It's on a, it's on top of an old landfill. Um, oh, cool. but, the, but it's, it's uh, very, very well maintained and, um, and you're above all of the all of the terrain around you, so you're mm -hmm. actually looking down, nice um, on the trees and such like that. So it creates really really long sight lines and and such yeah. like that. So it's a it's a great place to fly. Um, I've flown. I, I'm sure Anthony, you probably you probably know the guys uh, over at Black Dirt um, in Goshen, New York. Yep. Um, I've done some flying over there as well. Um, so. Connecticut, they uh, they don't like the noise. Yeah, um, yeah. You you could put a you could put a you know a hundred or a one twenty twin out there and make a racket, but uh, a jet they just uh, they they hear it and it's a, right. it's a no. So some of those gas motors, I mean, I guess they could be louder than a turbine, right? I mean, I have I don't have too many hands on experience with turbines, but I've heard some of those gas planes and they'll like. They're, they're really loud. Generally, they're much louder. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So it yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really only loud on takeoff. Once yeah. it's right. in the air, and and obviously when you're landing, you're pretty close to idle. So yeah. there's there's not a lot of noise. You know, the the gassers are always they're always yeah. loud. <laughs> so 
you know, but, uh, I follow the rules. I go where I have to, you know, yeah. just what's try, the, to, um, try to keep it fun. What's the, you want to shout out at your club? What's the name of the club that you fly with? Uh, so it's the, uh, so HVRCC. So it's, uh, uh, the Hudson Valley, uh, RC club. Okay. Um, yeah. In West Havistra, New York. And, uh, their president, Bruce Leach, um, is a great guy. He, uh, he's really the guy that, uh, uh, he was given the field by the town and, and mm. the town said, look, show us what you can do. Nice. And, uh, and he does, he does a great job maintaining the field. Um, he's a really good guy. Yeah. And, um, and he's done a really great job augmenting that field into, um, uh, I think he's, I think it's year number 16 of doing their air show out there for the town. Wow. Um, coming cool. up. So, um, he's been doing it a long time. He does a great job. He's a great guy. He's always been very, very, uh, generous and, and, uh, gracious with me, uh, yeah. flying, flying the turbines and stuff over there. So, um, I appreciate it. I, I keep going back uh because of that so well that uh, that you don't really have anywhere else to do it by your house so (laughs) that's that's true (laughs) that's true (laughs) but um i do get uh i have i i do have some other you know prop airplanes and such that um there are clubs that are closer that i can go to you know to do that um but um it's such a nice field over over Mm -hmm. across the hudson there it's it's hard to it's hard to turn down yeah. So are is that? Uh, it, I was gonna say, are you, bored, are you bored flying the prop planes now? <laughs> no, I. So uh, about about maybe a year year and a half ago, um, I used to be the type of guy that would uh, I'd buy an airplane, I'd build it, I'd I'd maybe detail it a little bit, I'd fly it maybe six ten times, and I'd sell it and yeah. go on to go on to something else. Gotcha. Um, not to not to knock anybody that does that. Um, I was really interested in just getting stick time on about any type that I could come up with. And, um, you know, so about a year, year and a half ago, I decided I'm going to start building the fleet that I want to keep long term. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and part of doing that was, uh, to get one single prop and, uh, two twin props. And I was going to (laughs) make I was going to make them the airplanes I wanted. And those are the ones I was, I was going to keep. And so I have a, uh, I have a third scale Taylor craft, which is my single. Cool. And, um, I have the, uh, the big hangar nine, uh, OV 10. I saw yeah, that. As, in as your one. Pictures. I saw that in and, your uh, and then I bought a, it's a hot Stettler, uh, a hot Stettler 336, uh, which is a pusher puller twin boom, um, Cessna with uh the actual retracting gear and all oh, that nice. um that was built that i bought uh, a couple of years ago so still Very working cool. on that that's that's quite a it's a it's yeah. a heavy bird but it's got a lot of power it's got a 120 yeah. a 120 twin up front and a 60 in the back wow, wow. so i <laughs> uh, should should have some juice going yeah, yeah. but yeah. um but yeah other than that i uh i stick to jets and um you know, like I said, for me, the, uh, the thrill is the camaraderie. I really, mm-hmm. I go, I go to the jet shows a lot, um, for the people that I see there and, and experiencing, you know, watching everybody fly and doing a little flying myself. That's always fun. But, yeah. you know, um, I like, you know, helping people that need help on their setups or, you know, helping people fix stuff. Um, you know, trying to, trying to get people to, to enjoy the show as much as I do. Mm-hmm. And, um, so that, that's, that's a big reason that I go, um, yeah. you know, the flying part is, uh, is only a very small part, you know, part yeah. of it for me. So yeah. I, f- I figured in with that in mind, I would, I would get the jets I want to keep for, for the long term, so I can fly them when I want to fly them and I can leave them when I don't. So, yeah. So what does your fleet look like right now for turbine aircraft? Uh, for turbines, so I have the, the A-12 behind mm-hmm. me. Um, the fifth scale F-16, that's yeah. uh, Tomahawk F-86. Yeah. That's the T-1 uh, F-22. Nice. Um, 
I think if I move this, there's a the smaller Skymaster F14 is on the table there. Yeah. Um, and then over on the other side, um, actually building a uh, a Carf B2. Oh, cool. How's that so, been to put together? It's uh, it's interesting for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like every time I I make some progress. I end up running into something where I'm like, what, what am I doing here? What, <laughs> you know, somebody tells me something about the last step yeah. I did. And I'm like, could have, could have used that information like yeah. three weeks ago. It would have been good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's, it's a relatively simplistic kit to put together, yeah. but be because of what it is, it's yeah. very temperamental. If, yeah. um, your geometries are wrong. Um, yeah you know, your symmetry is wrong, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I've really taken my time making sure the gear doors are straight, making yeah. sure the gear is straight, making sure that each of the drag rudders are open the exact yeah. same, you know, amount. Um, because I figure with this kind of airplane, if you're going to lose it, it's going to be on the first flight yeah. probably w within the first 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. If you get, if you can get it in the sky and figure it out yeah. from there, you're probably okay. Yeah, it exactly. is a wing after all. Yeah. I do um, a bunch of wings and, uh, and I, I help people with wings cause, um, the FPV wings are, are pretty popular and the biggest thing, and, and it's probably stands true for your wing too, is going to be CG, right? Like, yeah. CG Very on the wings nail. are hard to nail. Yep. And if you don't get them right, they just, they don't fly well. It, yep. it, it, it's like, you know, the old adage of tail heavy flies once and nose heavy flies like crap. Well, a wing, <laughs> if it's nose or tail heavy, it's not really going to fly at all. Like, right. It's, right. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've been working on, you know, part of it is I, I do want to, I, I do want to detail it. I want to, yeah. I want to do some scale details to it. And I've gone back and forth, you know, in the basement night after night going, well, you know, maybe I should fly it and then detail it. And then, well, <laughs> yeah. if you fly it and detail it, then when you fly it after you detail it, it's going to be completely different. Cause yeah, mate, you know, so you know, I, I think I've kind of settled where I'm, I'm just going to detail it and, um, and I'm going to fly it and, you know, just, I'm not in a rush. Right. I'd rather do it. I'd rather do it right. And when it's done, even if it takes a couple of years, you know, have it, have it be correct and have it look, you know, mm -hmm. great. That's mm -hmm. I'm okay waiting. Yeah, I'm not in a rush to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not too sure why guys. Some guys are. They want to get the airplane, and then they want to get in the air in like, you know, two days, and it's like, yeah, okay, but you know, <laughs> make sure you're doing things correctly yeah. for for doing that. So, so the detail stuff that you're talking about that that ties into to Cabu Customs, correct? That's kind of what your the focus is of what you. It looks like what you do with uh, with that hobby, that business side of things. Yeah, so I, I initially opened up Cavu for the purpose of of customizing yeah. uh, different different airplanes. Um, yeah. When I did it years ago, I, I wasn't honestly sure where it was going to go, what I was yeah. going to do. Um, most of the things that I've done since then, I hadn't really thought as being a possibility when I started it. So. Yeah. Um, things like the Raptor and, and building, you know, some of the complex cockpits that I've done and, and things like that. Um, it, it wasn't anything I figured I was just thinking, well, I could, you know, maybe dirty up somebody's airplane or I could, mm -hmm. you know, draw some panel lines and that kind of stuff and didn't really kind of know what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, since then I, I've kind of morphed it into, um, I do some building for, for some people when I have the time. Yeah. Um, otherwise, um, I'll build, you know, uh, separate kits and, um, and then I'll scale out those kits for people. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now the, the tricky issue seems to be shipping. A lot of mm -hmm. guys want, they want work done, but we can't get the airplanes here and we can't get them back. Yeah. So, right. Um, at least not without, you know, 
paying an arm and a leg, you know, yeah. and then risking a forklift going through the crate, you know, right. with, a, with a fork. So um, I am hoping that once we move down south, that mm-hmm. uh, it might be a little bit easier to uh, to bring customers in and out. But um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's honestly right now a lot of R and D. I do a lot of R and D as to um, what can and can't be done, um, mm-hmm. what is you know easy to do, what is hard to do. Um, if there's something, some people send me ideas um, yeah. of things. You know, like hey, it would be really cool if you had you know X, Y, and Z on this airplane. You know, and they'll know I have the airplane. So, you know, yeah. oh, yeah, that would be cool. Let me go see if I can figure <laughs> it out, you know. And, you know, and then, you know, once I do, I, I might go back to them and say, hey, you know, this is how I was, fi- you know, figured out how to do it, you know, and I'll give them a, this is how you do it. And they mm-hmm. they go and try it themselves. Or, hey, you know, this is a terrible idea. We <laughs> probably shouldn't <laughs> do it for these reasons type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah it's 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 been a lot of fun i can tell you yeah very cool so i want to show i'm going to try this and see if this works but so the detail like kind of the stuff that you do with the detail and stuff like that that's kind of what really caught my attention and and Mm -hmm. made me want to reach out to you because it is special what you do right so i'm going to try and show the audience real quick what we're talking about because i i pulled some of your pictures off of facebook oh boy yeah what was, what was i wearing <laughs> so let me see here if i can get this up though just give me a second yeah okay so now i should be able to do that and i should be able to share that all right so i'm guessing oh, yeah. this is um some that's of the, the stuff same. that you some yeah, of the stuff the that you do, right? yeah all right 86 yeah. yeah and this is um Air brakes inside the air brakes. Yep, that's inside the speed brake compartment. Yep. Um, so there is a really good guy uh, over in Germany. His name is uh, Stefan. Um, I I haven't figured out how to pronounce his last name yet, but the best I've got is is Radow. Um, but it may be like Rado or something like that. But um, he runs a three D printing business um, called Scale Print, and um, I have a, I, I'm sure you guys know Sean McHale, um, yeah. of, uh, strictly scale. Um, I've, I've been working with Sean for years and he's an awesome guy. He's, uh, he's helped me out on, on a number of occasions. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, uh, I spoke to Sean about, um, you know, what his plans were for, for the future. And he wants, you know, he wanted to go and, uh, and, tried the uh custom painting that he's doing which is yeah if you if you haven't had a chance it's fantastic it's I mean, turning out awesome it's impressive is, stuff yeah he is very very talented and i had yeah. i had no idea that he knew how to do all of that kind of stuff so i mean i'm i'm super happy for him yeah um but i i talked to him and he said well you know i, I can print you some stuff you know if it's kind of small and and easy and um but otherwise I'm going to kind of take some time off and see where this painting goes. And I said, okay, mm-hmm. well, you know, I, I don't want to bother you, you know, if I don't have to. Um, so I actually, I got uh, referred by uh, somebody else to this guy, Stefan in, in Germany. And um, he really, his bread and butter has really been helicopters um, mm-hmm. and, and cockpit he- and cockpits for different helicopters and, and some scale antennae and stuff like that for helicopters but he does have a bunch of jets now that he is 3d uh 3d catting parts for and um so he had generated this speed brake kit initially and um and he he and i were going back and forth about the size of the compartment and the depth and and we were kind of concerned based on how it is you can kind of see in that picture on the top the the door is not hollow it's not concave it's got a panel right there so we were kind of concerned about stuff getting caught and that kind of thing so he actually printed out a set for me and he sent it to me and then um i basically went through it and um and did some r d with it and and set it up just just as you see in that picture 
And then I, I sent him, you know, some feedback, you know, backwards and, um, he made some design changes and, and he, uh, and he created, uh, the, you could tell that the left and the right are actually different. Um, but when he sent me the original kit, he sent me two of the left side only. So I actually had to, I had to take a lot of the parts from, from the, um, from the right side and make the left side. Are um, they are they asymmetrical on the real plane? No, no, they look just like that. They're <laughs> actually it's different positions for the cylinders, different positions huh. for the accumulators, um, right. which was interesting. And um, as soon as I told him that, he <laughs> within like three days he he three D catted the the entire <laughs> opposite <laughs> compartment. And, um, and so now he, now he sells that on his, uh, on his website and, um, and it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty close to, uh, to yeah, full that's scale. Very so cool. It's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's awesome. So this is a cockpit, right. That you did here. This is, I guess, this is the before on the left and then yep. the, the after you got a little actual heads up display. Yep. And that's that's, in, that's in the saber too. Yep. Yeah. So how long does it take to do a cockpit like that? Um, well, that one, that one, not that, that wasn't too long because most of that, the Sabre is an old airplane. So all of the LED screens and a lot of the panel lights and stuff, stuff like that, they didn't have you know, exactly. back, back then. So it, it doesn't take a whole lot to do something like that. That's a lot right. of, that's a lot of paint and tracing and, and that kind of thing. Um, so I would say on average, it, it takes a few days to go through it and uh, and make sure that everything is, you know, dried correctly, colored correctly, that kind of thing. This is another one. What is this on? That's the main gear compartment of the Raptor. Wow. Yep, that's on the uh, that's the right side there. That's that's just insanity. I mean, that looks like a real plan. Yeah. Well, I I appreciate it. That's the. Uh, that's what I'm going for. So, <laughs> um, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy doing the intricate details, um, because it's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of times that you see that out there. No, and, yeah, for sure. Um, and I had, uh, initially I didn't know really much of anything about scale or details or anything like that when I was first started, cause I was flying sport jets. So what did I know? You know, the, uh, the BVM one six F sixteen had just mm-hmm. been had just been released when I was, you know, looking for, you know, something different, and that was the the cream of the crop, the end all be all, because <laughs> it, it was it was one of the first airplanes they ever had that they offered in a plug and play. Yeah, and so um, that's as much about scale as I knew. And that was well beyond my, you know, my wallet, my skill level, nothing. So scale to me was, was kind of a, you know, that, that's really nice, but I'm not that guy. <laughs> so this is, um, this is the before on the F-22? Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. before, the same gear wow. compartment just before. Yeah. That's that great. That's crazy. So. That's, that's, that's just crazy. Yeah. But, uh, back, um, oh gosh, it must be 10, 12 years ago, at least, I think, um, the Russian team for jet worlds, Mm -hmm. they, they did a ground up build of a yak one thirty. Yeah. That was, uh, um, Vitaly, Vitaly, right? Vitaly? Yeah, uh, Vasily, yeah. Vasily, yeah. Um, and they they have a bunch of YouTube videos on it. You can you can definitely yeah. go watch it. But um, that is where I first kind of got a look at what was actually possible mm-hmm. in, in the in these airplanes. And um, you know, I I would I'd watch that video over and over again and go, I don't know how the hell they did that. How did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, and then eventually, you know, you start experimenting. Like I said, a lot of it here, you know, in the shop is R and D. You know, yeah. oh yeah, that kind of looks good, but that's never going to stay in there, or that's too big, or you know, 
and eventually you know you get into doing stuff like that that you see there that's that's the main that's those the, are the weapon main bay, doors. right the main that's, weapons bay in the raptor yeah that's what it really looks like inside of a of a real raptor yeah it looks something it, it well it looks something like that yeah <laughs> and you you hand run all these little cables and tubes and stuff yeah yeah those are those are all hand those are all scratch built all handmade um, Twe tweezers and patience uh yeah uh yeah there's definitely <laughs> a lot of patience i can tell you that um but it's a lot of it is just um you this is start, insane you I'm start sorry, from one end of, you start from one end and you go to the other and that's, like, this is I crazy mean, this looks like a real home. plan. Well, they I know uh Jenny Jenny Alderman um and Barry Bott. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's uh that's one of Jenny's pictures there. Yeah, she uh, was on the show for episode four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's Florida Jess this year with the with the Raptor. So um I I had actually told Jenny before <laughs> I flew, I said, Look, I don't care if I burn it in on this flight, okay. <laughs> Get all this I picture. Want, all I want is that picture. Just to, just to say I did it. Like, that, that's all I want. That's and an expensive so, picture. So yeah, she, totally. Uh, so she was like, all right, I'll do my best. And and that's what she got. And I was yeah. like, I that's hugged her awesome on the picture. flight line. I was jumping up and down. I bothered her for days until I got that picture. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that, that's an awesome picture. It really it is. is. That's a great picture. Yeah, no, she she does she does awesome work. Yeah, that's the side missile bay there. Did you um, did you do a lot of models when you were a kid? Uh, I I did a couple, um, but not a lot. Um, like I said, aviation wasn't a big thing, um, in in my house when I was a kid. I was really the only one in my family that was interested in in flying, yeah. and um, eventually I, I did get. One of my uncles, um, who became my mentor because he he pursued flying very very quickly, went up through his ratings and um, and he loved it as much as I wanted to love it. And so he and I would we would talk about airplanes all the time, and that was that was my fix, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so he he was always kind of my motivator. Uh, to, to keep going. But um, my dad for a while thought, you know, model airplanes and RC airplanes. I mean, you could do better things with your money, you know, and <laughs> right, right. That, you know, <laughs> if you want, if you want models or something like that, you got to go to work and you gotta, you gotta earn them and you gotta buy them. So, you know, I, I did, but you know, at the other things that I wanted to buy as a kid, you know, the, I, I would only get a model here and there and maybe one for Christmas, but, um, yeah. yeah, for me, it was cars. So I was, I was really big into cars and RC cars and stuff when I was younger. And when I wasn't playing with RC cars, I was building models, you know, the yeah. test tour models where you glue and stuff together and paint the yeah. wheels and doing the interiors and stuff. Yeah. That's why I asked, because this is almost like, it's a separate part of the RC aviation hobby, right? This is almost like modeling as well yeah. on top of it. Yeah, it's I've definitely taken to that part of it now. Right. Um, when, when I was a kid, no. But um, like I said, after after I watched, you know, Vasily's video and, and, and some of the other um, builds that I've seen, um, like Miguel and Marvin Alvarez, um, mm -hmm they build they build a lot of really nice scale stuff down in florida um yeah. and see, and seeing some of their work and, and seeing what is possible you know i really you know i wanted to work on that modeling portion of it that scale portion of it and then try to create something where like you said when you when you take a picture of it in the sky or even on the ground you can't tell whether it's whether yeah. it's the real thing or not if if the camera angles right so right. that that was that was the goal initially and and it still is i just now i go to some ridiculous level sometimes just you know <laughs> because because i want to <laughs> yeah but um but it, it's a lot of fun that's again that's that's part of this hobby that i love is there's so many different facets of this hobby there's so many different 
fields that, that you can go in and you can know everything there is to know about one of the fields and absolutely nothing about the other. And right. if you, if you want to get into it and you want to learn a new side of the hobby, there's more than enough people that are like, yeah, come on in. The water's warm, you know, right, grab, yeah, your, right. grab your wallet while you're at it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the most important part. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. But, um, so, so this plane, uh, I'm jealous because <laughs> the A12. Yeah. So I, I've well, yeah, it's the A12, which is also what that's the brother or sister to the SR71. Yeah, it's the it's the first it's the first edition, so to speak, of the SR. Um, this was the first one that they built um, before the SRs came. So I've been wanting one for a while, obviously at a completely different scale. And uh, for my size scale, there's only really two available. Uh, Banana Hobby or LX Models makes one, um, and it didn't have great reviews. It's an older model now. Um, and then E-Flight just came out with one. Um, it's a small twin 40 millimeter. Yep. And it just, I, I have it. I had to rip all the E-Flight stuff out of it because I don't fly E-Flight. So I put my own stuff in it my own um escs and all that stuff in it and it just doesn't have enough power so it, yeah. like I, I had a really hard time just getting it to fly but this is like my favorite plane in the world it's just such an awesome plane and and just the history of this plane from like when you know us as a country put this plane together i mean this was really really high tech stuff you know, oh, it's yeah. still it's yeah. still the flat the the fastest plane that we've ever flown, right? Or or something like that. It holds a bunch of records. Yeah, um, yep, it does. Yep. So, yeah. Is so that this, um is that kit from Ultimate Jets from Ollie? Yeah, that's uh, oh that's what I thought. That's an Ultimate. Um, initially, it was uh, Danny Diaz had this one. Oh, okay, um, cool. And um, I kept bugging him about you know <laughs> hey so. It's pretty big and you know you you really don't you know you really don't want to have to store that in your shop and stuff right you know so you know i i poked him enough times where uh yeah you know eventually he uh he reached out and said hey you know if if you're really serious about it you know yeah let's 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 talk and um cool like you anthony this is this is one on the list this is right right if i you know if, if i could ever have had one you know, it, it, I would have done anything I had to, um, to get one. And, um, so I was really lucky, but this, uh, it's funny you talk about the history. So one of my favorite stories of the SR and, and the entire project was, um, back when they were developing it, you know, Kelly Johnson and the skunk works, they had discovered that at high rates of speed, the ordinary aviation metals that they would use to build airplanes can't hold up to that kind of heat. And so they had determined early on that, that the only thing that they could work with that would sustain was titanium. Yep. And unfortunately, the at the time, the leading country that produces titanium was was the USSR. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what the so the NSA and the CIA actually set up a bunch of shell corporations and they yep. bought all the titanium to build wow. the SR, yeah. which, which then was used to spy on the USSR. So. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a wild story, right? Because they, they had yeah. to buy it in quantities that wasn't going to like arouse suspicion. Right. Oh, yeah. So like they had to buy like small quantities from each company and it was like and, a crazy yeah. number of companies. And multi, yeah, lots and lots of companies. And, um, and so one tidbit about this one is the pipe the pipes for both the turbines are titanium mm, cool. Oh, cool so a little bit a little <laughs> bit of the history you know in in that one so i mm -hmm. i kind of i kind of like that nostalgic touch you know with very that nice so, so how many flights are on that uh, on that bird you know to tell you the truth i don't know um i haven't flown it yet because i picked yeah. it up at the end of the season this year oh, okay um and I got it without the engines. So I put, oh, okay. um, I put new engines in it. Um, they're a little bit bigger than the ones that came out. Yeah. Um, so ideally, um, 
it'll be this, you know, this spring, you know, yeah. hopefully, um, I've got a couple of fields in mind, um, to, uh, to call up and say, Hey, you know, would you mind if I, yeah. if I, if I bring my, you know, 13 foot a 12 out to <laughs> yeah. play? I have know. all kinds of questions. So you're in your basement, right? That's where your shop is. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the basement. So that sounds, sounds like it sounds so awful when I say it. That way. Right? I, I'm in the basement too. Yes, no, I still live in the basement. I'm, I'm in the basement too, so it's okay. Um, we're basement dwellers. It's all right. Um, how do you? It doesn't look like it comes apart. Like, does the nose does. come off? It does. Yeah. Because yep. that thing's huge. So how do you get it up mm -hmm. and out of your basement? How do you transport it? I mean, it's a big plane. So it it I have a I have a 14 foot trailer. So. Look, lucky me, I have, it's long enough, just barely. Got an extra foot. Um, so I can, uh, I can transport it in one piece. Um, and so it actually, I have double doors out, out the back of my basement. So okay. uh, with, with the, uh, the horizontal stabs off, um, it, it fits out the door kind of, you know, yeah, sideways. Di diagonally, you know, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but it is the only plane that I actually can't move by myself. <laughs> so um, i've i've discovered that and uh so my <laughs> but my wife is uh she she's used to um taking the nose as she says yeah now i'll take the nose okay so <laughs> so. you're gonna have to come on the wives of rc part two <laughs> we'll, oh we'll yeah have to, we'll have she'll, to get her on there i'm sure she'll I'm sure she'll have this some stories from her side of the game too <laughs> yeah it's so. funny I don't have doors leading outside, so I have to go up my stairs, and I have oh, to take okay. wings off and hold things sideways. And I have a I have a Bronco too. Uh, I have the Motion RC Bronco, which is not for a foam plane. It's not a small plane. It's it's got yeah. a pretty good presence to it. Um, yeah. And that thing is like carrying that thing upstairs is just talk about diagonal and upside down and crouching. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and and trying you so hard, to, and, yeah. yeah. It's just not the wall, not the wall, not yeah. the wall. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar. So it's raw. Yeah. So what's uh, what's another plane that you don't have that's on your list? Uh, I have always wanted a, an F one seventeen. I think cool. an F one seventeen would be awesome. Um, yeah. I I do know that. Um, I think it was Aviation Designs made one. Yeah a while back uh they don't make it anymore but yeah um but if they ever do or i other i ever find somebody that does yeah i'm i'm definitely uh i'm definitely in the game for that nice um but uh yeah i think uh, I, I i wouldn't mind a really a really nice big hawk yeah um i i've always been more partial to the to the 100s so the, yeah. the longer the longer okay. nose um and um so I, I wouldn't mind one of those but you know, i'm not in a huge rush for that mm -hmm. one um and when you say when you say large are you talking like the the carf skymaster large like one 3.6 scale or are you talking like one 2.5 scale no I, I don't think see the, because you get to a point where big is too big yes right and and you know for for me i've tried to stagnate the fleet in such a way where there are airplanes that i will take every day i can take yeah. to the field whenever i want to go flying yeah there are there are airplanes where i will take them sometimes to go flying but i'll always take them to the show mm -hmm. and then there are planes where like that one yeah where you bring it out when the weather's good and you've got a lot of space and yeah right you know uh maybe to an event that you're going to be at for for multiple days mm -hmm. and you know and you and you'll get some flying time on that but it's not an everyday flyer you yeah. know right. Right. and that's also part of the reason why you know part of my fleet are prop planes because mm -hmm. If, you know, if I just, Hey, I have a couple of hours free, I can throw the third tail, you know, the, the third scale Taylor craft I have in yeah. the back of my Tahoe and yeah. throw the wings in and I can be in the field, you know, at 30 minutes and flying in 35. Right. Yeah. So it, it's, 
you you just have to plan it out. Um, yeah, I used to be that guy, and I know plenty of these guys where they buy airplanes simply because when they take it to the field, everybody's going to look at them. Right. Yeah. And and it's <laughs> look at me, I've got this right. Right. But right. they may not fly it when they're mm-hmm. at the field that day. They may not fly it at all. Which is um, yeah. you know, and so. I, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I, yeah. I would rather have airplanes that I, I'd like to fly, um, airplanes that I can handle mostly myself. <laughs> <laughs> that one was just too, that's too good to pass up. Yeah, can't, totally. Can't pass that up. Um, but all the, you know, all the other ones I have, um, I'm sorry, you guys know Lukey stands. Yeah. I mean, Lukey's awesome. No, I don't think there's anybody in this hobby, at least not on the turbine side, that doesn't know who Lukey is. Yeah, of course. Um, so I have a bunch of Lukey stands with wheels on it, you know, mm-hmm. and putting putting any of these airplanes, you know, they have relatively narrow profiles. Yeah. So they fit they fit really nicely on a Lukey stand, and it's yeah. easy to maneuver, you know, around the shop, and that and that's yeah. what I'm looking for. But, um, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that are uh, really excited about the big F-14 that just came out. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I, I know there's some questions about you know, um, legalities and all that that I won't go into and, you know, making weight and that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. um, but comparatively, I mean, I, have, I, I mean, if I show you, I mean, I have the small one. Yeah. And the big one is bigger than that. Yeah. Wow. And so put that where that is, it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. And I right. don't have anything to transport the big F-14 anyways, even if I wanted to. You could get waivers for that though, can't you? You have to do like special stuff to get waivers, right? To If they go overweight or if they're too well, The big, limit's yeah. 100 pounds, right? So, yep. It's 100 think, pounds flat regardless. So yeah. even with a special, there's no special waiver over that? Nope. No. Not, not in the U.S., so, so I don't know if you guys follow um you guys know who Tyler Perry is, the actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a huge aviation nut, RC aviation nut. He's got a yep. whole I yep. don't know thing. So I was looking at his Instagram the other day and they're building this monstrous C17 Globemaster. Yeah. I mean, the thing is huge. Yeah. Like that's got to be over 100 pounds by the time that thing's done, right? I mean, it's well, carbon the the way Rami's building it, it's basically foam with a yeah. foam carbon, carbon layers on the huge. outside. Yeah, it but, actually probably won't. It won't no. weigh probably hardly That's anything crazy. for that kind yeah. of airplane. Even with all the battery, I mean, it's going to have yeah. a lot of batteries in it. I mean, yeah, you're talking yeah, about twelve S probably running. I don't know, ten packs. I mean, yeah. I, it I takes know. it takes a lot to make a hundred pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, and it takes a certain, it takes, there are a couple of airplanes that can do it. You know, yeah. The big F 14, I think, if you, if I was to take the big F 14 and do to it what I'm going to do to that one, mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't make weight. No. With all, with all the additional details and such on it, it wouldn't make weight. Um, but I know some of the bigger Sues, I know the big Su 30, that mm-hmm. can get heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but take, you know, this airplane, for instance, this airplane is, it's carbon fiber, titanium, and ready to fly. It's probably 65 pounds. That's yeah. it? That's yeah. it. Wow. So you can make a big airplane, you know, not even close to 100 pounds, yeah. but then you can also make a relatively small airplane in comparison can can weigh Right. Well, well up and over if you, if you're putting a lot of stuff on it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it, it's just relative, but I mean, Ramey, Ramey's got it down, man. I, oh, you know, yeah. If you've oh, ever yeah. seen his videos, man, yeah, you're just no, like, he's... okay, <laughs> you win. <laughs> he, he figured it out. <laughs> he he it, definitely figured to, it out. <laughs> when it comes to airliners, if you ever needed an airliner or yeah. a corporate jet or something, that he'd be the guy I call for sure. Yeah. yeah, you know he doesn't make a lot of them though. He I think he does a very limited, yeah, yeah very no, labor I, intensive. I can only yeah. imagine what they cost too. I mean, oh, I'm I, I'm sure, and and I mean, I think the, uh, I mean from a from a turbine guy, it's it, it's a little different, but a lot of 
things these days have been aimed towards people who want to get the most and pay the least. Right. Mm -hmm. And and in in the normal consumer market, of course, we we don't want to pay $10 for milk. Yeah. You can pay $5 and get the same milk. We don't want to do that. Right. But there is, I think, for me personally, uh, especially flying turbines where you, you have a significant investment in each one of the airplanes, mm-hmm. that there's a there's a limit that guys will draw for one of a number of different reasons yeah. as to why this costs too much, this doesn't cost enough. And this is right in my price range where right. I get good quality, but I don't look cheap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it's it, it's been this teeter totter like you know which company can can offer the most products that meet that criteria. Yeah. And over the course of time, I mean, I've seen friendships come to come to an end <laughs> for. <laughs> using one brand over another and paying this or that or you know and and for me use (laughs) i use what works i use what i trust because when i put when i put stuff in the airplane and i have so much invested time and money into these airplanes you need to have that confidence that what you're putting in is going to keep your airplane right safe Mm -hmm. safe for another day Right. And yeah. you're going to be able to bring it back. Yeah, and absolutely. And so, you know, so for what some... do you fly? Because then you're you're diving down the rabbit hole now. So what 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 do you 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 stepped into it yourself, buddy? I'm sorry. What do you fly? <laughs> what 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 control are you flying? Jetty? You're flying? Tarbo, well, I'd like power box. Before you answer that, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. I was gonna say John's pointing at the camera, which is usually like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> no, but before you answer that, I'm just gonna gonna I'm gonna it'll give you some time to think, but. This actually, as soon as you you were talking about that, it really brought up a, a thought in my head. So we had Steve from FR Sky on uh, a couple episodes ago. And one of the questions that Steve asked me was like, I can't remember exactly how it was phrased, but it's like, why do you fly Jetty and not FR Sky? Or why why do why do the jet guys generally fly like Powerbox or Jetty or uh, I mean, even, even Spectrum, whatever, um, and not FR Sky? And it's like, well, and I... I I think my answer to him was kind of what you said. I basically said, you know, it's as a jet guy myself, I don't mind spending two thousand, three thousand dollars on a radio system because it's not to me, it's not a huge drop in the bucket, right? right. I would I, I would almost rather have a two thousand or three thousand dollar radio system versus a a one thousand dollar radio system compared to the overall price of what you're flying and yeah. the fact that you get to use it on multiple planes paying that much for what you guys are doing on a radio system isn't a yeah. lot in the grand scheme of things. Exactly. But there, and there are, there's a lot of guys that, I mean, a lot of my friends that have switched over different radio systems and they're flying FR Sky and they love it. Right. And that's, that's great. But so again, that's it's, the one it's thing, your choice. That's the one thing I will say is I've seen their progression from their products to what mm-hmm. the new products are. And they really are high level. They're they're nice. They they've yeah. come a long way. It it yeah. just feels yeah. a lot nicer in your hand. It it feels like a quality product. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like compared to what what it used to be, is compared, that, is that... Com- yes, compared way to what it used to be. Like so if you compared yeah. some of their older radios to an X twenty S right now, yeah. or not even a pro, just the quality, the fit, the finish, the feel of it. Is just yeah. so much nicer. Yeah, it's got like a nice, heavy, solid feel to it compared to what it was. You know, yeah. their top radio was what an X nine D, and then they came out the Horus's. Horus was a nice radio too, but this is still, it's that much nicer. It, yeah, I, you know, I haven't really got to play with jetties and stuff like that. Um, but I would say it's probably comparable to what a jetty feels like. The quality of what a jetty feels like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So cool. So what so, do yeah, you so, fly, Chris? Yeah, back to you, Chris. What's your <laughs> radio radio brand of choice? Powerbox, right? Powerbox. So I I fly the core. Cool. Yep. Um, and I mean, touching on what you were saying, um, I mean, we all know the guys. We all know yeah. the guys who are who are. Yep. I I I will not pay less than 
you know, $2,000 for a radio, you know, yeah. because I know $2,000 is high quality in our hobby. Yeah. And then you get the other guys who are, well, I mean, you can pay, you know, five, six, eight hundred dollars $800 for the same, you know, the same features. Yeah. You know, when you, when you compare them side by side, yeah, there's a lot of things that I will say appear the same but aren't necessarily the same. Yeah. Right. And for me, um, my, my radio progression. So th this is going back a ways. So uh, aside from the, the Megatech radio that I got with the first <laughs> airplane and any of the RTF foamies that I bought after that, um, my first real radio was an old 9503. Yeah. So and many of was, us, I think, started with that radio. <laughs> and it was bulletproof. Yeah. I mean, you could drop it, throw yeah. it. Wait a whatever. ton. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. yeah, it was heavy, but it was easy to use. Yeah. It was it, and it was reliable. And yeah. from then, I had a 12X. Yeah. And that was awesome, too. Just had more of it. It was just the 9503 with more stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and so it was, you know, that was the progression. And then I switched over to spectrum once JR, you know, that they had that yeah. split and everything went, everything went sour and, yeah. and all that, you know, it was time to, to find something else. And so at that time, spectrum was the up and coming, you know, mm -hmm. brand. And, um, the first one I bought was a DX 18 mm -hmm. and I loved it. The DX the DX series, in my opinion, was the best radio series they did. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the 18 was bread and butter for years. Yeah. And eventually I ended up getting a few more advanced airplanes that needed, you know, more than it wasn't more than 18, but it was coming up on it. And so I yeah. wanted to have a little bit of wiggle room. So a couple of guys said, Hey, just get a 20. Just do a yeah. 20. And so I bought a DX 20. Yeah. And, and same thing. It was, it felt good in the hand. It was easy to yeah. program, you know, and it was reliable and right. I, I didn't have any issues, you know, with it. Mm -hmm. Eventually it turned into the IX 20. Yeah. Um, and while I will say the IX 20 was a good radio, it was not, preferable to the dx mm -hmm. it just felt different in my hand um i didn't necessarily care for the android switch over yeah um and that kind of thing having said that i never had any issues with it yeah it was it worked for me it was reliable it, it's once you once you figured out a little bit more of the layout of the menus and and such like that it became very simplistic to mm -hmm. you know to go with so yeah I never really had any issues with spectrum and I don't yeah. know whether that was because of, you know, luck or set up, <laughs> set up or whatever, because we, we, we all know guys who, you know, pick a brand and they've had a yeah. problem. Right. And so it's, you know, well, I don't understand why you fly them because I heard so-and-so lost a, you know, a jet or two jets or whatever on that brand. Why do you, you know? Yeah. Okay what happened for me was I ended up actually getting that. And yeah. when I bought the Raptor and the Sabre actually virtually at the same time, yeah, it be, it became very quickly obvious that I was going to need more than 20 to plug into yeah. and Spectrum doesn't make more than 20. Yeah. And so, um, I had talked to a bunch of a bunch of guys in the hobby, a bunch of bunch of friends of mine, and they all said, "Well, yeah, you know, Powerbox has got more than twenty. Why don't you yeah. go with them?" I said, "Okay, well, you know, I don't know anything about Powerbox, yeah. so I don't know how to program it, and I don't, I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing, you know." And so you're you're going through the YouTube, like, okay, yeah, programming. How do I do that, you know? And, yeah. and eventually, you know, it was. You know, yeah. like everything, it's a fire hose kind of in the beginning. And then you're, all right, yeah, that makes sense. I understand. I remember how to do it this time. Um, but then trying to trying to tie it together with Spectrum. Yeah. It was just, 
there is so much stuff on that F twenty two. So much yeah. that's going so much that's going on, so many mixes, so many flight modes that's going on, you know, and I was trying to kind of play with apples and oranges. And mm-hmm. it got frustrating to the point where I, I walked away from the airplane for a while. <laughs> I was just like, all right, you're sitting there until I have patience for you again. <laughs> so and when you were flying Spectrum, um, like when you were flying your your IX20 and, and uh, DX series and stuff, were you using a power box in the airplane or were you using power safe receivers? No, no, I was, it was power safe receivers. Oh, okay. Um, okay. You know, it was that integration that yeah. it, it made it easy you know, simplistic, the, the yeah. setup and the installs yeah, are, were always straightforward and simple, yeah. you know, put your antennas here. And, yeah. and honestly, comparatively to some of the other brands out there, Spectrum is really sort of laissez faire when it comes to mm-hmm. where you're, where you put your antennas. Yeah. There, there are places you shouldn't put them, you know, <laughs> don't put them on your engine and all the other kind of places <laughs> that we yeah. kind of know not to do, but there really isn't, isn't as much dependence on the antenna placement yeah having said that once i got into power box and i realized yeah. what the antennas actually do and positioning them correctly yeah it it amplified the reliability tenfold mm-hmm. nice. if the antennas are in the right place yeah and so for me I don't have anything against spectrum. I never had an issue for me. It was, I have to go to something yeah. else right. that is easier and more intuitive to program yeah. with and the more channels. Box. Yeah. Has more channels, has more inputs. Yeah. And so, uh, a, a good buddy of mine, um, he had switched over to core and he said, mm-hmm. you, you, you looking for a new radio? And I was like, no, oh, Yes and no, maybe, I don't know. And he said, all right, well, let me show you, you know, how this works. And, you know, he kind of gave me a little tutorial on how to use the core and, um, and how to set it up and all of that, because comparatively to spectrum, it it is apples and oranges. Yes, of course. It's not the same system. It's not the same logic. It's not the same setup. Mm -hmm. Um, a hundred, a hundred percent in spectrum does not mean a hundred percent in power (laughs) box. So get it you know you have to kind of retrain your brain to yeah, right. a, a new system um but to put it into comparison once once we got it figured out um mm-hmm. i actually had him come up here to visit me and mm-hmm. also I, I i'll admit i used him to, uh, <laughs> to help me finish the raptor <laughs> So we could get it ready for Florida Jets, and, and we had we had an awesome time, and nice. and and, uh, and it was great. But we, from start to finish, programming that Raptor, there yeah. are there are twenty three inputs yeah. on the Raptor, twenty three inputs, three flight modes, yeah, um, and I think it's 13, 13 different movable surfaces. Wow. That that can move simultaneously with wow. moving of the sticks. And we had it programmed in about an hour. Yeah. Cool. So it was, for me, looking for a, a new radio, it wasn't a necessity. Yeah. You know, it, with, you know, oh, yeah, I've, I've lost airplanes. I got to switch. Or yeah. they're behind the times. I got to switch. Yeah. You know, for, for me, it was... I don't have a choice. Like I gotta, yeah. I gotta find something, you know. And um, when it comes to buying equipment for these airplanes, I don't measure it so much on a cost basis, mm-hmm. but it's more of a utility basis. Right. So, am I getting what I pay for? Mm-hmm. You know, from a, from a utilities purpose. So, do I have enough channels? Do I have enough functions? Yeah. Do I have the telemetry I want? Stuff like that. Okay. Ergonomics goes along with that. You know, does it feel good in your hand? But also stuff like customer service. Mm-hmm. Right. Is there customer service that's in the United States or not? Yeah. Is if I have questions on 
how to do this or how to do that, or I need service or something like yeah. that. Is that relative? Is it available quickly? Is it somebody I know, you know, something like that. And so I yeah. kind of look at it from a broad, a broad spectrum. Yeah. And I, I, I knew Danny Diaz. I knew Adam strong. Um, yeah. I know, I know power boxes in Jacksonville. I know that they yeah. are always available for questions and all that. And so all of that kind of added into, all right, well, it's really easy to program power box stuff with a core. Yeah. So together with all of the extra stuff, I don't yeah. mind paying the extra money because I'm yeah. getting, I feel like I'm getting what I pay for. And yeah. then that continues on for, for the, the life of the radio. So mm -hmm. I can always call them. And I do, yeah. I bother them to death. Probably, <laughs> they probably should be on my Christmas list to send gifts to because I bother them so much, you know, but do you, they're, um, they're always willing. And, and, and that's, for me, that's a huge thing when it comes to choosing yeah. equipment, but I don't, I use Jetty, use FR Sky, yeah, use course, Spectrum, what, whatever right. works for you, because right. in the yeah. end, in the end, we're all, we're all out there for the same reason. We're all out there to yep. fly. We're all out there to drive. We're all out there to, you know, put it a put a boat on the water. We're all out there to enjoy the hobby and have fun. Yeah. Right. And if, exactly. if you're, if you feel like you're not using the equipment, that's going to get you to that point, then it's probably not the right equipment yeah. and you need, and you need to find something that works for you. Yeah. So is, is power box and core, you know, have they been fantastic? Absolutely. I'd recommend it to anybody who's interested in, in that, that radio, that technology, they can absolutely reach out to me or, you know, any of them. But mm -hmm. if, if, if it's out of your price range or if it's, you know, if the programming seems a little bit too, you know, too much to learn at one time. Yeah. That's great. You're, you're, you're not a bad person or anything like yeah. that. I will help you however I can help you. Yeah. Um, even if it's not, you know, with the, with the same brands that I fly because. Yeah, exactly you know, I think a lot of guys kind of get a little bit blind, if you will, mm -hmm. to, to why we're actually here. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and you know, we're supposed to be out there having fun, enjoying at the end of the day, we're ragging on each other's landings and drinking beer, you know, right. and, flying and, our, flying our toy airplanes. That's right. You know, <laughs> right. And, and that's, and that's, and, and I think some guys kind of lose that scope every once in a while when they get <laughs> yeah. into these conversations about which brand is better and this yeah. and that, and, you know, and all that. So whatever works for them, you know, yeah. right. 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 Right now you, I fly, um... I fly core, I fly power box. I have no regrets and, yeah. and I will likely, I will likely probably never switch to another. Nice. Uh, again, so are you that, um, are you par partial to a certain turbine brand? Um, I fly King Tech. Okay. Yeah. And what about um, uh, what about servos? Partial to any specific brand? So it, it I guess it depends on depends on the setup that I'm yeah. that I'm going with. Um, okay. So for turbines for a ground up build, I'd probably go with MKS. Mm -hmm. Um. MKS has always been really good. Um, I've flown Savox as well. They're very good. Yeah. Um, I think the OV10, when I set the OV10 up, I was still flying Spectrum. And so the yeah. OV10 has all the 63s in them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's all Spectrum stuff in, in, uh, nice. for servos in there. But, um, cool. you know, servos, servos are like radios. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got, everybody's got brands. Yeah. Everybody's got too much or too little to pay, you know, <laughs> but what, whatever works, you know, yeah. And yeah. whatever, whatever gets it to do what you want it to do and, and allows you to have the confidence to take the bird to the field and not feel like you, you're walking yeah. on pins and needles, you know, yeah. whatever that is, go for it. I'm with you. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you're good. So nice. I've never, uh, I've never landed a plane and thought to myself, man, I should have spent less on servos. These servos feel too good. Right. So, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah know, it's, pe it's people ask me all the time, like what servo should I go with? And it's like, well, I don't know. This is what I put in my planes. They're not the cheapest option, but 
when I land my plane, I've never, I've never said that to myself. So, right. 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 And, that, and that's what it's about. You have to have, you have to have the confidence that whatever equipment you're putting in the airplane, yeah, you're going to, you're going to trust that the airplane's going to stay together, going to stay under yeah. control. The turbine's going to stay running, yes. you know, and you know, on top of that, you can add all of the other factors, the price, mm-hmm. the ergonomics, the, the customer support, whatever you want to add to it. But yeah. in the end, you cannot be sitting there ready for takeoff going, well, I hope it holds together. <laughs> no, you know? that usually doesn't end well. <laughs> no, and, and, and especially with, you know, with airplanes like these that can no, really, yeah, you know, that. they, they no. can be dangerous and, 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 you know, you need to respect them. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I, That's I a good point. A, I think a lot of people, as much as they get worked up about the brands, they all kind of have that understanding that, look, one major incident and this is it. It could be a big mm-hmm. deal. It, it, right. It's done. Right. Okay. You right. know, because. Yeah. Between the FAA and 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 the other organizations that are trying to you know introduce themselves into the unmanned flying in this country, you you know that if if it's some kind of you know incident with a turbine jet and somebody gets hurt or you know God forbid worse, mm-hmm. and they fought they find you know that that there's negligence or something like that and you know it becomes an issue. You know that you know that somebody is going to say, "Well, you see, so maybe we shouldn't be doing that anymore." Yeah. I and, I don't even think it has to be a turbine, to be honest with you. I, I don't think yeah. I don't think so either. I, I, I think any major RC anything that is in that airspace that is frowned upon at this point right now with everything going on, I think is going to hurt every aspect of the hobby. I was, I was watching a video the other day of, um, and this is why everybody hates, doesn't hate, but they, the FPV stuff gets, gets a really bad rap. But there was a guy who posted a video on Instagram and he flew the Washington Monument with an FPV drone, mm. drove it at night, and then posted it on Instagram and shared it. Oh my gosh. And it's gotten shared and posted. And with all this stuff, as Chris just said, with remote ID and all these other regulations, like, dude, this is not a good time to do stupid shit like that. Like, yeah. didn't even put in there, you know, this was five years ago before there was regulations. No, like, you just went out and did it and posted yeah. a video of it, of you diving the Washington Monument with a fucking drone. And it's a bad idea. It is a really, really bad idea right now because they, they're they coming for the airspace. They, the companies yeah. want to commercialize it. The FAA is like, great, companies commercialize it. It's less Yahoo's running around with jets and drones, right? So, so Chris, quick question, because we're, we're going to probably start wrapping up soon. We've been on for almost an hour now, a little bit over an hour. But sure, sure. As, an, as a pilot, right, and you get to, I guess, go to all these different locations as a, as a real pilot, do you get to bring any of your stuff with you? Do you get like – you get what I'm saying? Like – Space in the cargo hold. Uh, yeah, right. That's, right. Like, like, that's what I'm asking. Like, do you get like extra luggage space that you can throw a plane in with you? And you, know, I, you got a I layover wish, in Miami, you got a jet with you. You know, I, I wish I wish I, I wish I did. Um, when I was flying corporate, um, if I if I if I wanted space, I, I could get it. Okay. Um, in the in the airlines, um, it's not a thing. Right. Um, but uh, funny you mentioned Miami because when I went down for training in Orlando, I actually brought an airplane down there with the intention to fly, which I never did because I was too busy to to, right. to get away from training. But um, uh, my buddy, my buddy Joe, who's the same guy that came up to show me how to how to work the core, um, he was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll keep it down here for you." And I'm like, "Dude, fly it if you can fly it." You know, when I come down. <laughs> Yeah, if right. I have a if I have a layover in Florida, you know, I have an airplane to fly. Yeah, man, all right, awesome, you know. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, if I get Florida layovers or something like that, you know, I can uh, I can very easily take my take my radio case and right. Uh, right. Cool. and I'll and I'll have an airplane to do that. But yeah. unfortunately, most of the airplanes that I have, um, even if I wanted to, um, they're not. <laughs> They're, they're not huge. small enough. Yeah, right. not small enough to get to get into the hold. If you even right, right. Um, right. 
so yeah but, but i'm sure um, you got to see some pretty cool fields and stuff right traveling around i'm sure you've gotten to take in some yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of really nice fields and, and honestly there's a lot of fields that nobody knows about yeah. And, and if, you know, I guarantee, and I, I've mentioned it a couple of times to some of the guys I've met at those fields. And I'm like, man, if you guys, you guys want attention, if you want to spike your numbers or something like that, take a picture of this field and, and mm-hmm. post it on, right. on every RC page you could think of, because, right. you know, this is a prime spot for, you know, whatever turbine jets, iMac, you know, um, I know there was one that had a, a dedicated control line field. And <sighs> I mean, the control line field itself was nicer than some of the flying fields. Yeah. I've been at. Yeah. And, and I was like, Hey, nobody knows this is here, you know, yeah. but if you ever wanted to do an event, you know, just post a picture, you know, this is an yeah. amazing field, you know? And I, I think I've seen it maybe once where they're like, here's our field, you know, and I'm not really honestly sure whatever came of it, but, um, but it, it's awesome to see as many places as I've been and as many clubs as I've been to everybody at all the clubs have all been there for the same reason. Mm-hmm. And they've all been, welcoming to me and to and to some of the other people that I that I've seen that are new members or trainees or you know trying to get their turbine waivers or whatnot. And yeah. you know, there's a lot of people out there that are that are just willing to help you, you know, right. get into the hobby, enjoy the hobby and all of that. And I mean for me that just reinforces why why I want to continue doing this. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and hopefully, you know, some of the some of the younger, you know, the younger kids, my kids, you know, they're still a little, little too young, but you know, the younger kids that are like, Hey, you know, I'd like to learn how to fly an RC airplane. All right. Well, I know a place, I know a guy, right. you know, and hopefully that becomes more commonplace. Yeah. You know, the more places that you go and that, and, you know, and I think that would be, that'd be an awesome leap for our hobby, you know, mm-hmm. especially, like you said, Anthony, now there's a lot of criticism, a lot of public opinion, you right. know, so, some of it is from, you know, people who aren't in the hobby and people who haven't seen some of the things right. we've seen and haven't done some of the things we've done. And so they don't understand that there there's more to it than seeing the drone dive, you know, the Washington <laughs> Monument. Yeah. Or, but you're, you're the, the uh, perfect you're the perfect example, right? Like we, so we had this conversation with Jenny um, Alderman the other day. And, you know, my concern with all the regulation and stuff is it might hinder. So you're somebody who went from, and, and a lot of people do that, right? A lot of people at an early age get infatuated with whatever it is, rockets. They want to go and work for NASA or they start playing with airplanes and they yeah. want to be pilots. And it's like kind of like that natural progression. You're the perfect example of that. Right. Mm-hmm. My concern with all the regulation and stuff is we don't want to take that away. Right. Because then we, we could hurt that. Right. We could hurt those kids who build an airplane at their school. And all of a sudden, because of all the regulation can't just go into their school field with a drone club and fly them. Right. Because right. that could, that could hurt that. That could hurt. Right real aviation in the future right yeah absolutely you, gotta, and you need a stepping stone and 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 there is a um there are a couple of guys up in district one uh, up here in the northeast um that got together and had an idea of starting an outreach team and the goal of the team was to have a group of volunteers that love the hobby want to help go to any event that we could Mm -hmm. and work with both, you know, adults and kids and everybody in between and show them, you know, everything about the hobby, give them an opportunity to fly airplanes, fly the simulators, kind of go through, you know, um, a lot of the STEM programs, um, STEM and steam programs that are out there for, you know, engineering and stuff like that. Um, trying to incorporate the hobby with the STEM and STEAM programs. And, 
you know, we have been, we have been to, uh, we were at the uh, air show in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, um, back in September. Um, that had well over 50,000 people in attendance. And we had, wow. you know, thousands and thousands of people that were, you know, coming up to the booth, asking questions, you know, being engaged, they were learning about our hobby and that, you know, it's, it's not the evil dark side that everybody yeah. seems to portray these days, it's, it's not. you know, and, you know, in all of those events, we've gotten a lot of feedback that just what you say, it's helping the younger generations to, to spurn on that interest in mm -hmm. engineering and, and flight and, right. you know, any of the, the STEM and STEAM topics that you're giving them an opportunity to see it in action, to feel it in action and kind of invigorate their, their interest right. to continue pursuing that. And, you know, in so doing, we've, we've met contacts from the FAA, from various aviation companies, um, Pratt and Whitney, um, Sikorsky, you know, a bunch of, bunch of different companies. And, you know, we go through it with them and they're like, hey, you know, I didn't know it was like this, you know, or <laughs> this, yeah. this isn't what I thought it was. And, you know, it sort of demonstrated to us that, you know, not only do we as, as, as a hobby, we need to, be together in the message that we're sending to these organizations. Right. But we also need to reinforce that, hey, you know, we do more than just fly airplanes or drive cars mm -hmm. or drive drones or, you know, right, right, right. You know, we help to, you know, keep that younger generation interested in the programs, in the hobby, in, you know, basically yeah. expanding, you know, their knowledge and their abilities, you know, and, and, and then augmenting that into maybe what could be, you know, a, a long fulfilling career in any one of the fields, you right. know, that it yeah. could be aviation, it could be engineering, it could be any, you know, anything related to, you know, right. uh, radio, you know, the radios, the tech, the, you know, who knows? Yeah. Rocket rocketry. Go, yeah, you can go work for NASA and figure out how to get us living on Mars. I mean, yeah. there's a huge you know thing going I mean? on so. in the model rocket community. There's a huge surge going on in that community now, which is, it's it's pretty cool. They're putting you know homemade flight controllers and telemetry. There's like people ever since Elon you know made a rocket come down and land. There's people who are trying to do this with toy rockets. Wow! Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a whole yeah. cool. There's a couple of big YouTube channels that are that are around yeah. it and doing it. Huh. But you know they're making their own flight controllers that will you know have telemetry and it's it's wild. It's wow. it's taken on its whole world. So yeah, it's it's that's definitely awesome. something that you know it yeah, makes people that. broaden their horizons. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean that's that's what I hope that that as a hobby, I hope that that's what we continue to push and right. that it's, it's not so much bickering about, you know, this regulation or that regulation. It's, Hey, let, let us show, show you what we're about. Right. Okay. Yeah. From a personal point of view, from a hobby point of view, from an educational point of view, you know, let, let's, let's let you change your opinion based on what you see, not what you hear. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. I, you know, I really hope that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, are somewhat discouraged at the direction that this, you know, may be going with the remote ID and that kind of thing. And, you know, I really hope that you don't quit on it because, you know, if you do quit on it, we're finished for sure. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen two camps uh, online. Yeah. I've seen the, Maybe three camps. I would say I've seen more of two camps. I've seen the effort. I'm not going to comply camp. And mm -hmm. then I've seen the, you know, I, I'm not dealing with this. I'm just getting out. And, and I've been seeing a lot of people in groups sell a lot of their stuff off huge collections yeah. of plans and stuff. So it's like, yeah. there isn't a lot of people right down the middle. And, and part of that is because there isn't a lot of great solutions for remote ID right now that like from the manufacturers, like even Spectrum has one that they're coming out with, but it's it's not out yet. And that's actually why they pushed back the date. They pushed back the date because nobody 
no, none of them. They don't, have, they don't have an RID, right? No, nobody had one good working solution that they could ship when whatever a hundred thousand of them out to customers, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't own a DJI drone that has it built into it, then you know you got right. Modify and then you know, drones. and a lot of guys don't. They either don't live near or or their field is not a Fria, and right. and so they're not. You know, they don't have a choice. And right. that's, mm -hmm. I, and, and I know that can be, that can be frustrating for sure. That's my uh, world. Not, not having the choice, but yeah. Um, I don't have any free is I fly. I'm not posting or telling anybody where I fly. Cause then there'll be a lot of people there, but we fly at, I fly yep. at a school field. Yeah, I, I fly at abandoned yeah. fields because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I get a lot of pushback from clubs because they're not, a, I can't fly a lot in sight anymore. That's the other part of it. I, Flying FPV killed me being able to fly on a side. <laughs> on a side, yeah. It, it murdered me. It really did. Because, yep. like, once you're in the plane, I, I, I lose orientation, like, really fast now. Yeah. Like, it's, I used to be able I, to do I've it. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's horrendous now. So, we, yeah. um, we just has a, had a positive thing up here in Canada with our, so we, we're going through a lot of your guys' the same type of, of issues and stuff. But, so as of last year, we had to do a, so we have a, a an app by our version of AMA, which is Mac. So Mac has this agreement with our pass Wilco. So it's basically you go on there, you set your flight plan, they email you the whole logistics of everything and you get this 16 page document. Um, and anyway, so now the clubs only have to do one at the beginning of the season. And as long as somebody looks into it every 56 days, one member of the club needs to do it at the beginning of the year and that's it nice. used to be one person would have to do it at the beginning of the day so you would just okay. it's part of part of our routine so that's one small little victory for us but yeah yeah, yeah. make it make it progress for sure yeah I, I i honestly think part of the issue and it so we we had um when remote ID was coming out, the FPV community actually protested at the FAA and stuff like that. I think part of the problem is the general public doesn't truly understand. And I think that there'd be more people behind it if they understood what was going on mm -hmm. and just my personal opinion. But I think a lot of this regulation isn't about the safety. I think it's more about the commercialization of the airspace. I think it's more about Amazon and Walmart and Google and all these companies being able to do package delivery and not have their drones and flight plans interfered with while doing that stuff. Right. Yeah. The general public isn't like you're complaining about my FPV drone that you might see flying at a field. Right. How many people are really going to want these drones? Hundreds of them flying over their heads all day long, dropping off packages. I, the thing is, I don't think people will mind that because it's doing something for them, right? I, I Our model know. aviation stuff is, and they don't give a, a, a hoot about. I, <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's going to go that way. I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I think. I think it's definitely. You know, like I was saying, the the goal of this this outreach team, you know, was to educate yeah. the, the general the general public in in kind of the way things are. For right. real. Not the things yeah. that you see on YouTube or not the not the crazy things that you see on the news, like, you know, a drone almost hit an airliner or something yeah. like that. And, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I agree there's definitely motive for commercialization, um, primarily because it's dollars and cents. Right. And mm -hmm. that's the way the world works these days. Right. So when it comes to Amazon saying, Okay, well, we'll pay you, you know, a hundred million dollars if you approve this regulation for us. Yeah. Right. Okay. They the FAA is the FAA is going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because you know, at, at, because we're we're hobbyists. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't. We don't. Honestly, we don't want to deal with the FAA if we don't yeah. absolutely have to. Nope. Okay. So there's nothing in it for them, and like you said. Yeah. People aren't really going to mind because it's doing something for them. At the same time, I feel like it's it's going to be a lot like ambulances. 
Mm-hmm. You you don't really know they're there until you need them. Right. Mm-hmm. And so people are going to be kind of oblivious to it at first. And they're gonna, it, it'll be a novelty. Like, oh, there's one of those drones. Yeah. I've never seen one. You know, this kind of thing. Okay. But what happens if a drone does have a malfunction and something happens? You yeah. know, what, hap- what happens if it drifts into an airplane and, and, yeah. and an airplane really does hit a drone? Okay. Not only will that have repercussions for the commercialized side of things, right. but it'll it'll ripple down to whatever is left of our hobby as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Be- because I think one of and, and you touched on it earlier, Anthony, with how the FPV guys get kind of a bad rap. Oh yeah. It, it's because I I have over the course of time seen the correlation between drones and RC kind of meld together right and that you know it's it's an rc airplane oh it's a drone right and 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 you say oh it's not a drone and then oh no it's a drone like you use a little controller like i could get one of those uh, you know best buy or whatever for christmas it's a drone right so they and so they tie everything together even if now a drone even if they're not at all together okay yeah if i flew a 13 foot a12 over new york city you're gonna know about it okay <laughs> you're gonna know okay yeah no i, I, I and you, you know you're flying drones in the in the washington monument nobody knows but you know what everybody eats it up right, right the general man. public you know you see the one the the guys that put the the roman candles on the drones and then they fly it up and and, and you've got these guys that are shooting roman candles at you know at people from yep. a drone yep whether we want to or not, the general public's going to say, "Oh, you and them, right. you're the same. You're the it's same. All part of the same community." So, so, so when we change that rule, it's it, it'll change this rule too, right? Whether mm-hmm. you like it or not, comply or quit, right? Right. And and I think there's there's more and more of a push, especially on the on the in the government side of things on the government affairs side of things to sort of make that distinguishing factor like look you're punishing the larger group for the carelessness of the smaller group that isn't affiliated with the bigger group right Mm -hmm. okay because the people who fly the drones down the washington monument or the people that fly the drones into the approach path of the airliners at jfk or whatnot they're not they're not part of AMA. Right. I gu- guarantee they don't have any kind of 107 certification for the no. FAA. No. They don't have any idea about what the rules and regs are between the AMA and the FAA. Right. They're doing it because they think it's cool and it's something they got for Christmas and they want to go see if they can actually do it. And the barrier for entry now is so cheap. Yeah, like you could buy a whole FPV setup with a drone, goggles, maybe not the greatest quality stuff, but a whole setup, goggles, controller, drone, five hundred yep. bucks. Yep, and you're in. So it, it's, I think that it's important that not only do we not quit on it. But, oh yeah, but don't get so frustrated that you kind of lose sight of. Right. What we're actually still doing here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I make you make your own decisions. Comply, don't comply. That's entirely up to you. Yeah. What I can what I can tell you for sure, having dealt with the FAA, I, I, I used to work with the FAA on a daily basis. I can tell you without question that if something were to happen for somebody who did not comply. That's the end. All oh, together. Yeah. Oh, All yeah. together that it's over. Well, you see, yeah. we told you guys do this and you could keep flying and you didn't want to comply. Now all of you are done. Yeah. yeah. And it, it and it will be an unfortunate consequence and probably not one that that individual got up that day and said, "I'm going to ruin it for everyone." Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. But it's but it's it's going to be that way. And it's, it's going gonna to happen. be something like that. It's going to okay? happen. It's definitely going to happen. It's like that guy who decided he wanted to fly out of uh, the Las Vegas Strip 
Did you hear about that one? He, yeah. He, yeah. He, he wanted to fly a DJI drone out of his hotel window to get video of the strip, and he lost control yeah. link, and it landed on the airport runway. Ended up on the airport oh, yeah. next to the taxiway. Yeah. <laughs> landed on the airport runway. Yeah. And so well, it's just... link, like, but that's it. That's the, and that's part of the problem. To what you were saying, there isn't enough. There isn't people going. Oh, you know what? I just got a drone. Let me look up the regulation. Let me see what's this. What? Where's a good area to fly this? Let me fly it in an area that's got all kinds of 2.4 gigahertz, you know, interference because of all the mm -hmm. hotels and Wi-Fi and cell right. signals all around here. Yep. Let me fly in the area that is the absolute worst for control signal. Yeah. Landed. Landed right on. The, the, the oh, landed, landed next to the taxiway. Yep. And then there was wow. another guy who lost his drone off of Staten Island and it ended up hitting a black lock. Yep. Yeah. I had heard about that. Yeah. It's just, it's now that it's, was an accident. He, he lost his, he was flying in a good area. He didn't get fined. He, he was flying in a good area, lost his control link and, and the thing just kept flying until it was out of battery and ended up going into the flight path of a, a flight path of a black lock and, you know, took a chunk yeah. out of the prop, but yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's bad. It's bad luck. Right. But it, it's still a mark. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's not intentional, but it's still a mark. It's still absolutely. on the record. It still happened. And unfortunately it shows the possibilities, you know, yeah. of, of something like that happening again. And, you know, in this country, at least you, you know, the, the government can't go to private, you know, corporations say, well, you can't sell those to the general public anymore. Sorry. Right. right. Yeah. They can't, they can't do that. Sorry. No, that's, yeah. like, that's not the way capitalism works. No. And the other problem no. is the other problem is like, if I, I, this was actually part of my comment to the FAA because I didn't, I didn't feel like they, the way they went about remote ID and look, I'm complying. I have a module on order. I'm waiting for it. Still not here yet. Um, I could make a drone literally out of brushless motors and an Arduino if I wanted to. Sure. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, even yeah. if you did put that into play and you were like, you can't sell this or it's gotta be that. And you can't sell that people yeah, are going to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. It's not necessarily yeah. going to, and, and, and again, you got it. Like you it. said, there's, there's a pool of people that are, they don't care. Right. Okay. Put right. all the rules you want. I'm still going to fly. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and, and, I mean, I, I think you could probably think of one of a number of different laws that are in place to prevent something from happening that still happens oh, because absolutely. The, absolutely. The, the people, <laughs> the people who are doing it don't care whether there are yeah. laws or rules in place to prevent you from doing it. Right. Yeah. So right. will that still happen in the RC world? Yes. If that's all there is left then there's really no hope that the hobby will ever come back once it's no. gone. Yeah. Um, do I hope it ever gets to that point? Absolutely not. I hope it turns no. into something where, you know, there's a mutual agreement between both sides and that everybody does their part to uphold that agreement because in the end, we're all counting on one another right. to not mm -hmm. mess this up. Right. And that's what it comes down to. Don't mess it up. And so, you know, that, that ties back to just about every conversation we've had tonight about reliability of equipment you put in your airplanes and confidence Absolutely. you have to bring the airplanes and stuff back. Because Absolutely. in the end, you can't be there going, well, it's hit or miss. Well, if right. it's hit or miss, don't fly because if something <laughs> happens. There's more at it, stake. It, it's, yeah, it's more than just the airplane that's, that's going to get right. burned here. So, yeah. but anyways. I don't feel uh, bad for the first people who are going to do something stupid and get caught because they're going to get the book thrown at them. Once all the stuff's in the place, I, I yeah, you know, they find I, some dude on YouTube last year or whatever. He's, I think the guy's name is Philly Drone Life or something like that. He was flying in Philadelphia where he shouldn't. They find him like it, end of the day. I don't know what he ended up paying, but the original fines were like one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. They went through his videos. Yeah. Yeah. They went through wow. his videos yeah. and they were fining him for like each one of his videos. Yeah. And like every time he like flew some plays and he posted it all on YouTube and they were just, they threw the yeah. book at him. Hard. That's illegal. <laughs> Hard. That's illegal. Hard. It, was, it was a big oh, yeah. number. It was, uh, it was over a hundred grand. I, I think he ended up settling for much less, but. 
and I think that I think you're I think right. We lost John. John, you still there? Oh, no. <laughs> I think he oh, lost no. his internet. Oh, he probably got a phone call. That happens to him sometimes. He gets a phone oh, call really? and, <laughs> and then he disappears because he's on his phone. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's uh, I I I can definitely see them starting to keep a, a closer eye on the people who do. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know the the influencing and, and such like that, and they use the drone to fly places, you know, and all that. But you know, as as bad a rap as drones get, and you know, I was one of those guys at one time. I was like, guys, stop flying to your airplanes. You're, right. you're screwing it up for all of us. Like right. the FAA wouldn't know we were here if it weren't for you guys. Okay, but the more that the more that you get into it, the more you realize like that it, it's. It's not any of the guys we know. You right. know, mm-hmm. everybody else following the rules. It's it's the it's those who are you know getting those drones that want to create that content. You know that let me fly down the Washington Monument or down the Strip and then yeah. post it online and get you know a million bajillion views because views equal money and all that other kind right. of stuff. Right. And, and, right. and so, but they're not thinking about the, the consequences, whether no. it's related to them personally. Or any of the residual consequences to to hobbyists like us, mm-hmm. or yeah. any any of the companies nowadays that that use drones for for legitimate purposes, right? real estate photography, yeah, you know, right. you know, pipelines, all that kind of stuff. I mean, they're they're all they all fall under the same umbrella. Yeah, yeah. And it, and as much as as us in the RC side of things, we don't want to be grouped into that group because they they seem to be heading towards a direction of turning the screws a little tighter on the yeah. regulations on that side for the commercialization prep that that they're going for it's going to happen like right. it or not it's going to happen oh, and, absolutely. And it may not be tomorrow it may not be even this year okay but it's going to happen oh, absolutely and yeah. and we just I think we have a responsibility if we want our hobby to, to continue, we all have the responsibility to just do what we can to ensure that we're doing things correctly. We're staying safe. We're following the rules and, 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 you know, the airplanes we're putting up in the sky are, you know, good enough to come back. Right. Yeah. You know, right. so, so anyway, it was a pleasure having you on Chris. We're gonna yeah, absolutely. Up. Thank, Thank you, you guys very on. much. Um, I appreciate it. Find you at taboocustoms.com. That's the webpage. Uh, yeah, you you found the Facebook page. Um, yeah, I, I'm on there as well. Um, I tend to post. I'll post stuff personally from mm-hmm. my from my personal page, and then I, I'll probably make a post for Cavu, and you know you can go back and forth between them. You know, yeah. Nice. However you want to do. If not, hopefully. You know, I'll uh, I'll see you at a field that I end up at. Right, these right. Days. Good luck on your move. <laughs> yeah. so, good luck thank on you your guys. move to Florida. Thank you. Thanks, thank John. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you guys soon. Take, Take care. care. Bye, everybody.